What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another edition of Coding with Robbie. My name's Robbie, and in this video we're going to be creating a CRUD JSON API in Golang. So we're going to be using some third-party libraries in this video. We're going to be using Jin, which is the top HTTP web framework, and then we're going to be using uh, GORM, which is the top ORM. So uh, if you haven't liked and subscribed, please do that now and let's get right into it. All right, so first things first, you're going to want to download the uh, Go programming language if you haven't already. You can just come to go.dev, click downloads, and then grab the one that mat matches your platform. So if you're on uh, Apple, you could also use Homebrew. And then, yeah, once you got Go installed, you can uh, run Go from the command line. And you'll see all the commands you can do with it. If you type Go env, we can see that our Go path is, um, where is it? Go path, go path, go path, is our home folder slash go. So they kind of want you to organize your code in a specific way. So you're gonna create that uh, go folder in your home directory. And then within that folder, you need a bin and source folder. And then within source, you create a folder for where you're hosting it. So mine's github.com. And then within that folder, there's another folder for my username, Robbie Klein. And then in that folder is where you can create your project directories. So let's, uh, once you create those, let's CD into it. So I'll go CD go, CD source, CD github.com, CD Robbie Klein. And then I'm gonna make a folder for our project. So I'll go make dir, uh, I'll call it go crud. And then I'm gonna open it in VS code. And yeah, one thing you'll wanna do, whoops. So I gotta CD into it first and then open it with VS code. And uh, one thing you'll want to do first is download the uh, official Go extension. And when you install this, it'll recommend some other stuff. Just hit install all. So yeah, now we can go back to our terminal and let's run go mod init. And this is going to create a go mod file. And this is similar to like a package.json if you're coming from Node or a gem file if you're coming from Ruby. And that's cool. So now we can install packages in this project. So we're gonna be using some different stuff within uh, this tutorial. So we're gonna need this compile daemon package. I think that's how you pronounce it. And this just watches files for changes and rebuilds it and runs it whenever there's a change. So let's uh, grab this package. So we'll copy the command. We'll just paste it in here and run it and it'll download it. And then we're also gonna install it so we can run it from the command line. So do the same command, but do go install instead. That'll install it. And then we're also gonna use .env, which is just an easy way to load environment variables. So let's grab this one also. Uh, I'll paste it in. And now we got that package and you can see it's adding it to the dependencies list right here. And then we're also going to be using Jin Web Framework, which is the number one framework for uh, Golang. So let's go to Docs and uh, let's see, quick start. We got to install it with this command. So let's grab that and we'll, uh, we'll paste it in. So there we go. We got it downloading. It'll just take a second. There we go. And then last up, we're gonna use GORM, which is an ORM library for Go. It's the most popular one. So let's go to um, docs. And we gotta install a couple things. We want the GORM library right here. So let's run that. And then we also need a database driver. So I'm gonna be using uh, Postgres. So I'll copy this part of it, paste it in, and then type Postgres. And there we go, we got it. So we got all our packages downloaded. So now let's uh, create a main.go file. So I'll go in here, main.go, and it's gonna be package main. And we need a main function, so let's go func main. And then let's just uh, print line hello to see if it's working. So there we go, and now let's run this uh, file with that compile daemon uh, package we installed. So to do that, let's check out the docs. We go back to the repo right here and they give us some examples. So let's copy this one right here. And I'll paste it in. So compile daemon's gonna build it every time there's a change and then we can run a command after. So we just wanna run the build it program. So it's dot slash whatever you named your go module. So mine is go crud. So 
So let's run that. We can see it builds it and I get hello. And now if I change hello to hello one, two, three, it's gonna rebuild it and I get hello one, two, three. So that's convenient. And um, yeah, let's get started. So let's check out uh, let's check out the Jin documentation, the quick start guide we're on. And they give us an example right here. So let's just copy this. I'll go to main.go and I'll just paste it in there. And uh, yeah, we're creating a Jin uh, app or router right here. And then we're adding a route and we're running it at the bottom. So let's just change this to the root path and let's uh, try it. We'll go to Chrome and we'll go to localhost and it works on 8080 by default. So we go there and we get our message. So it's working. So now let's set up uh, our .env uh, package. So let's create a new file .env and we'll create a variable within there called port and we'll do 3000. And then let's go back to the docs and they show us how to load it right here. So let's copy this and we'll go to main.go and um, we could put it right up here, but there's also a special function called init, which will run right before main. So we're gonna do it in there. So let's create func init, we'll paste it in. It'll automatically add the imports and now this should be loading our variables. So now if it worked correctly, it should be running on port 3000. So let's make sure it works. We'll go back here. Go to localhost 8080, it doesn't load anything. So I tried 3000 and there we go, we get it again. So we got that working good. And uh, yeah, now I'm gonna bring this to a separate uh, file. So I like to organize things in separate files. Let's create a folder, we'll call it initializers. I just, I like the way uh, Rails organizes stuff. So I kind of copied that. Let's create a new file called load env variables dot go and uh, in here we'll go package initializers and then let's create a function and we'll call it load env variables and just note that I started it with a capital letter this is important if we want to use this within other files so make sure you do that and then let's just copy in what we got right here save that and now let's run this function within our main file here so let's go here and i'll type initializers dot load env variables and uh, save that and it was supposed to auto import it but it's acting weird so i'm actually just going to reopen this whole folder see if that fixes it and let's go back here initializers dot load environment variables and there we go this time it actually imported it so that's working and let's go back here and i'll just restart it so it looks like everything's working let's just check that our server is still running so go back here hit refresh and i still get it so that's cool so next up uh we got to connect to a database so we don't even have a database yet so the best way to get one or the easiest way is I found this Elephant SQL uh, website where you can create a free Postgres database. So just sign up for this, and then once you log in, you get to a dashboard where you can create a database. So just create one, do free, and just go through it. I already created one, so I got it right here. I'll click into it, and here's our database credentials. So let's go to Gorm and see how to connect. So we go here, and let's go to connecting to a database. And here's the example they give us. So I'm also gonna do this in a separate file. I'll go database.go. And then in here will be package initializers. And uh, we'll go func connect, and we gotta do capital to db. And this function is gonna run this connection example they gave us right here. Uh, so let's copy that. I'll paste it in. And then, yeah, we gotta fill this in with our, uh, wait, I copied the wrong one. So this is the MySQL example. We want Postgres. So let's go down here and copy the example. So get those two lines, paste them in. And we gotta fill this in with our credentials. So let's go to Elephant SQL. And here's my credential stuff right here. So let's copy it. 
And let's see, we got the uh, username right here. So let's paste that in. We got the password right here. Let's paste it in. And then we got the database name right here. I'm gonna delete this time zone stuff. Uh, database name right here. And then we gotta change the port. The default one is 5432. And then for host, it's right here. Put that in host, so that looks good. And then instead of doing a local variable right here, I'm gonna create a global one that we'll be able to access in any of our files. So go var db of type gorm db, like that. And then let's create a variable here to store an error. And then instead of creating new variables, I'm gonna assign it to the existing ones. So db and error. And then let's just check if there's an error. So we'll go if error is not equal to nil. If it's not equal to nil, let's do a log fatal and say fail to connect to database. So save that, everything looks good. Let's run this function from within our main file. So go in initializers and I'll run it right down here, initializers.connectedDB. Save that, let's check out our terminal and I'm not seeing any errors, so we should be connected to our database. So one other thing I think we should do is uh, probably put this in an environment variable. So let's copy this, and I'll go to .env, and I'll just go db string, or db url, I guess. Paste that in. Let's go back here, and now we're gonna use that environment variable. So to get it, let's check out the docs. If we go to .env, you do os.getEnv and put the name of it. So uh, dsn is equal to os.getEnv and ours is db url. It's gotta be all capitals, db url. Save that, let's see if it's still working. So go back here, I don't see any errors, so we should be good. Cool, so uh, we got our environment variables, we're connected to the database. We got an example, we'll just test her out. So now let's start doing our CRUD operations. All right, so let's create a new folder. We'll call it models. So before we can do anything else, we gotta define our models. So let's create a new file called postmodel.go. And let's see how to make a model. So go to, back to uh, GORM. Let's go to uh, declaring models and they give us some examples. And the one we want is right here. So uh, this gorm.model is gonna automatically add these four fields for us. So let's go in here, we'll go package models. And uh, whoops, let's paste in that example. And ours is gonna be a post because we're gonna be making a blog. And a post is gonna have a title. And make sure to do capital letters here and a body, which will be a string also. So save that. And now we got to migrate our database. So it creates a post table for us. So let's just create a new folder. I'll just call it migrate. And within there, I'll create a file migrate.go. And this is going to be package main. And uh, let's look up how to migrate. So if we go here, let's go to, uh, I guess, overview. And they show it right here. We can auto migrate it. So let's copy this. And let's go funk in it. And funk main. So in funk main, we'll paste the auto migrate. So we got to get our DB here. So let's make sure to connect to the DB up here. So initializers.connectedDB. We also got to load the, load the environment variables. So initializers dot load M variables. And then yeah, to access our database, it's not going to be initializers dot DB. And we want to auto migrate and now we pass it a struct of our model. So we can go and models dot post. 
And uh, did that auto import it? No, it didn't. Oh, okay, I did package model instead of package models. So now let's go back and now it should work. And it does not. There we go. All right. <laughs> so uh, we're importing that file and we got our model struct right here. We're passing it to this auto migrate function. And now if we run this file, it should create our uh, table in our database. So let's go here and let's go, go run migrate slash migrate. And it's gonna run the file and we don't see any output. So I'm assuming it worked. So let's connect to our database and see if we have it. So I'm gonna be using software called uh, Table Plus. And you can download it for free at uh, tableplus.com. They got a free trial. And I don't wanna update right now. Let's go back here. I'll just copy the connection string. And then let's go create new connection, import from URL, paste in that URL and hit connect. So I'm connected to that database and I can see I have a post table right here and it has those fields we created. So that's cool. So now we can finally start doing our CRUD operations. So a lot of setup, but we're in a good position now. So let's uh, create a new folder called controllers and let's create a new file in there called postscontroller.go. And then in here, let's go package controllers. And uh, yeah, let's take our function right here and just copy it. I'll just get this part. Let's go funk and we'll call it, uh, what do we want to call it? Let's call it posts and it has to be capital. So we can use another uh, file post create. And there we go. And now we can use this in our other file. So let's go here and let's just connect it right here. So let's delete, don't mind my dog. Let's delete all this and let's go controllers dot post create just like that. Make sure everything's working. So let's run our program again. <laughs> and let's go to uh, Chrome and go back here and just refresh. We still get it. So it's working. And yeah, so let's uh, change this to slash posts. And it's gonna be a post request this time since we're creating something and we gotta send in data. And then yeah, in here we're going to get data off request body and then create a post and return it. So uh, <clears throat> let's look up how to create in GORM. So if we go back, to this and we go to GORM guides and we go to create. And uh, here's an example right here. So let's just copy this and I uh, will paste it right here. So we're gonna be creating a post. We're gonna have to get, to get the uh, post struct thing. So let's go models.post and a post is gonna have a title so for now, we'll just go hello, and a post is gonna have a body. So let's go, body is gonna be post body. So save that. And then right here, we have to go initializers.db, since that's where we're storing it, dot create, and then we just pass it this uh, post model we created right here, or post struct. So post, and this should create it in our database, and then it returns the result. So let's see what result is. If we go back to create, result says if there's an error or how many rows are affected. So let's check for an error. We'll go if result.error is not equal to nil, let's just, uh, C dot status, we'll go 400 error and we'll return early. And then if there's no error, we'll return with the post we created. So we can return post right here. So this should work. We're not getting the data yet. We're just hard coding it to test. 
So let's, uh, we're gonna use Postman to test our API. So Postman is just an interface to send uh, HTTP requests. So you can download it here. And uh, yeah, I already got it, so let me open that. So here I am, I'm gonna create a new workspace. I'll just call it Go Crud. It's gonna be a personal workspace. And uh, let's create a new collection, I'll call it Posts. And then uh, let's create a new request within Posts. So add request, and I'll call this Create Post. And it's gonna be a post request to HTTP localhost 3000 slash posts. Save that and let's send it. So I send it and it created a post and I get it back. So let's go to our database and I'll refresh and we can see it created our post right here. So that's cool. So now we gotta get the actual data off the request body and uh, use it within the create part right down here. So let's see how to do that. Let me go to my cheat sheet real quick. So uh, to get it off it, you have to create a struct that's gonna store it. So let's go var body. And it's gonna be a struct that's gonna have a body type string and a uh, title type string. And then we're gonna run c dot bind, and then we pass it a reference to that body struct we uh, declared up here. So and body, and now we should be able to access uh, those properties through body. So right here we can go body dot title, and we want to get body dot body. So there we go. So now when we create, it should actually be using the data we send in. So let's test that. Go back to Postman, I'll go to body, I'll go raw and select uh, JSON. And let's send in a title uh, from rec body. And let's send a body um, from rec body. I think we gotta do capital letters here, so let's make sure to do that. And let's send it and see what happens. So I send it, and now it's using the data we passed in. So if we change this, we'll get a different post. So that's cool, there's our create function. So next up, uh, create, we gotta read. So let's just minimize this for now. Let's create a new one. Funk posts, uh, we'll call it index. And it's gonna receive the gin context. And yeah, in here we want to uh, get the posts and then respond with them. So let's go back to the docs and uh, let's check out how to get data from Gorm. So I'll go here, I'll go to query. And then here's how you can find a single record and uh, receiving a record by the ID right there. And we wanna get all objects, so it's pretty simple. We just go, let's see, posts is equal to, um, sorry, we gotta create a variable to store our posts. So let's go var post, and it's gonna be of type models.post, and it's going to be a array of those. And now on this function where we're finding it, we just pass it uh, our variable right there, a reference to it, so and posts. And then it's actually gonna be initializers.db. So there we go, this should be finding all our posts and assigning it to this variable right here. And now we can respond with it. So let's copy this down here. And let's just go posts is equal to posts. And let's connect this to our router now. So go back to main. We'll create a new one, it'll be a get request this time. And it's gonna be connected to posts index. There we go, let's go back to Postman and try it. So I'll create a new request. I'll call this um, fetch posts. It's gonna be localhost 3000 slash posts and let's run it. And there we go, we're getting all our posts. So that's our uh, 
fetch all function right there. Now let's create one to just fetch a single func uh, single post. So I'll call this func posts show. And it's gonna take this stuff again. And then it's very similar. This time we just gotta find the single post. So let's change this just to post. And it's not gonna be an array, it's gonna be a single post. And then let's look up how to get a post. So go back to Gorm and let's go to receiving objects with the primary key. And here it is right here. So initializers.db.first. And we pass a reference to the post variable right there. And then the second argument is the ID. So uh, we're gonna be getting this from the URL. So right here, we gotta go get uh, ID off URL. And let's just connect this to our router real quick. So let's uh, go back to main.go. And it's gonna be a get request to slash posts slash colon ID. And let's connect this to post show. And yeah, this is like a dynamic route. So if we go to post slash one, two, three, one, two, three is gonna get assigned uh, to a param called ID. So if we go here, how do we get that off the URL? Well, you just go, let's go ID is equal to, and we do the context and it's dot capital param. And then we put in the param we wanna get, so ID. So this should be grabbing the ID and assigning it to a variable called ID. So let's pass that in right here. And uh, this should be working, so let's try it out. We'll go back here, we'll create a new request. I'll call it fetch post. And it's gonna be localhost 3000 slash post slash an ID of one we wanna get. So I'll just try one. I'll hit send and I get the first post. And I go two and I get the second post and I go 200 and I don't get any post. It gives me the zero uh, value for everything. So one thing I don't like is I named that post. So I'm gonna make it singular right there. All right, so we got our reading stuff done. All right, so next up we gotta do update. So let's create a new function. We'll call it posts update. So I'm just gonna copy this guy right here. Make it post update. And yeah, in here we got to get the ID off the URL. Uh, get the data off request body. And then we gotta find the post we're updating and we want to update it and then we want to respond with it. All right, so we did this first part above, so let's just copy it, it's right here. And we also read data off the request body before, so let's copy that. So we go back up here, we create a struct that matches the data we're sending in and then we bind it right there. So I'll paste that in. And then next up, we gotta update the post. So let's look up how to do that. Oh, sorry, next we gotta find it. So we did that in show, so let's just copy it right here. All right, so we're getting the ID off the URL. We're getting the data off the request body. We're finding the post using that ID off the URL. And now let's look up how to update. So we'll go back here, we'll go to update. And then here's how you can update a single column, but we wanna update multiple. So we'll go right here. And they got an, an example right here, so I'll paste it in. Ours is initializers.db. And then we have to pass it a reference to the model that we're updating, so var and post. <clears throat> and then in here we put our updates. So ours is gonna be models.post. And a model has a title and a body. So we're gonna update title to body.title, which we have stored right up here. And we're gonna update body to body.body. .body. There we go, this should be updating. We need a trailing comma. And something's wrong, I didn't put a capital B right there. And now we just gotta respond with it. So we can just copy uh, this up here. So let's connect this to our router and try it out. <clears throat> So let's go back to our main.go file and let's create a new one. And for updating, it's gonna be put. 
and it's gonna be slash post slash colon ID, and we'll connect this to post uh, update. So let's go back to uh, Postman and let's create a new request. And we'll call it update post. And we'll go localhost 3000 slash post slash the ID we wanna update. And then let's go in body and we're gonna send some JSON with it. So let's just go title, updated title. Save that and this is gonna be a put request and let's send it and see what happens. So I hit send and I get the updated title. So if I go back to fetch and I fetch the first post, you can see it really did update it in the database, which is cool. And yeah, it only updates the fields you send in. So if I send in body, I could also update that. Oh, and that's cool. It actually doesn't have to be capital right here. So you can do lowercase, it looks like. So I can go one, two, three, hit send and it updates the body now also. All right, so last up, we gotta do delete. So let's create a new function called post delete. And it's gonna get the context again. So let's copy this right here. And then in here, we gotta get the ID off the URL. And then we gotta delete the post. And then respond. Uh, Respond, there we go. So the first part we've done already, let's just copy the line from up here, paste it in, and let's look up how to delete a post. So we go to delete, and uh, delete with the primary key, and they got an example right here. So let's paste this in, ours is initializers.db, dot capital db, and then it looks like we have to pass it uh, the type, so let's go and models.post, and then we put the ID right here. So let's go ID. And let's see what this uh, returns. It doesn't look like it returns anything. So uh, let's go down here and let's just, uh, let's just go c.status. We'll go 200 to indicate that it went through successfully. So now let's connect this to our router. I'll go back to main. And this is gonna be a delete request. And it's going to be post slash colon ID. And this time it will be connected to post delete. And let's try this out. Let's go back to postman. And I'll create a new uh, request. I'll call it delete post. And it will be localhost 3000 slash post slash one. And it's going to be a delete request. And let's see if it works. I hit send and I get a 200 back, and if we go in our database, now if I go to this first record, this is kind of interesting behavior, it doesn't actually delete it, it updates this deleted at column to let us know that it's deleted and at what time. So if we ever want to revert, we still have the data saved. So that's cool, and now that post won't show up if we like try to fetch it. Say so we tried to fetch the first post, now we get the zero value, if we go to fetch post, it's no longer in that array. And yeah, we're good to go. We pretty much got everything working. We can create, we can fetch, we can fetch a single post, we can update a post. So I'll update the second one and we can delete a post. So everything's working good. Hopefully this gets you started with this uh, Jin framework and Gorm and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe and have a good one.